Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I am Jim Rulot, and I am a colossal Star Wars fan. I enjoyed the movies, the games, but I enjoyed the books the absolute most. The Star Wars Expanded Universe lasted from the early 90s until 2014, when it was unceremoniously booted by the dark forces of Disney. Now, with a series that long and that complex, finding a good place to start is not an easy prospect. But thankfully, your friendly neighborhood Grand Admiral General Lotz is here to help. And today, we're going to be taking a look at the essential Star Wars novels. After reading pretty much all of the Star Wars EU, I have determined that there are seven essential Star Wars novels. These are the books to read if you are just a fan of the original True Trilogy and don't want to go deep into the lore and have whole shelves of Star Wars novels. Shadows of the Empire, Truce of Bakura, the Thrawn Trilogy, which consists of Heir to the Empire, Dark Force Rising, and The Last Command. And finally, we've got the Hand of Thrawn Duology, which consists of Spectre of the Past and Vision of the Future. These seven novels will fill in all the gaps the movies left and wrap up any outstanding plots and provide a happy ending to the saga. Shadows of the Empire was written by Steve Perry of Aliens fame and released in 1996. The novel takes place between episode 5 and 6 and you will only need to have seen episodes 4 and 5 to get what's going on. It does not feature Dash Rendar as a main character like the game does, but this makes sense as the novel shows the rise of Luke Skywalker as he transitions from Neophyte to Jedi Knight. It also features Leia kicking ass and the crotch of a new villain named Prince Shizor, a crime boss that is written to be a smart and wily foe. The novel also expands the character of Darth Vader and makes him an even more epic villain. This is the first novel I ever read in the Star Wars Expanded Universe and it showed me a Star Wars that I had never seen before. If you like this novel, then you will love the rest. Truce of Akura was written by Kathy Tears and published in 1993 and takes place the same day as Return of the Jedi and the only prerequisite to understand this novel is to have seen that film. The novel fully expands from the films and grows the franchise. Han, Luke, and Leia have to fight a new non-imperial threat and deal with the aftermath of the death of the Emperor Palpatine. Han and Leia have to come to terms with their feelings and Luke has to come to terms with his Jedi heritage. If this had been made into a movie, it would have printed money. Now, we got the big mama that is the Thrawn Trilogy by Timothy Zahn. The first novel released was Heir to the Empire, and it was published in May of 1991, and was the first novel of what would become the Star Wars Expanded Universe. The year zero for the Expanded Universe was the Battle of Yavin in A New Hope, so every novel will take place either XABY or XBBY. Heir to the Empire takes place in 9ABY, or nine years after Star Wars A New Hope. Timothy Zahn does an amazing job getting us up to speed in this new time period. Luke is now a Jedi Master, Han and Leia are married, and Leia is expecting twins. The New Republic controls three quarters of the galaxy with the Empire on the ropes, but a new commander named Thrawn begins a new campaign that could bring the New Republic to its knees. We also get a new Dark Force user named Joris Sabayoth that is up to some dark deeds. The novel showed that Star Wars did not peak with Empire and that it could be a viable franchise without George Lucas writing or planning. The characters are likable and compelling, and the plot is understandable. When you read this, you will wonder why other sci-fi writers can't do as well. The other novels, Dark Force Rising and Last Command, just cemented Star Wars as a franchise that had the energy to conquer pop culture. And lastly, we got The Hand of Thrawn Duology. The first novel in the duology was Spectre of the Past, published in 1997. This novel features the right way to bring back a villain. There is no somehow blah 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 returned. Instead, there is a reason and a justified reason at that. The novel takes place in 19 ABY. The Empire has been thoroughly defeated and is pinned up in just a few sectors in the Outer Rim territories. And the leader of this empire is a one Gilead Paleon, and he is ready to surrender to the New Republic. But a specter of the past has returned. That's right, Thrawn is back, and he has information that can tear the New Republic to pieces. This is how you end a franchise. The stakes are high, and in Vision of the Future, the original trilogy we all grew up with finally gets a proper conclusion. If you love Star Wars, you will love these books. And if you don't want to commit to a giant book series, if you stop with Vision of the Future, you will not be disappointed. But if you're a cool dude like me, there are 
oh, so many more books to read. Before those god-awful prequel movies came out and muddied up a great franchise, we had a few novels set before the original trilogy. There was the original Han Solo trilogy, the Lando trilogy, and the young Han Solo trilogy. What would come to be called the Han Solo Adventures was a trilogy comprised of Han Solo at Star's End, Han Solo's Revenge, and finally Han Solo and the Lost Legacy. These novels were written by Brian Daly and published in late 79 through 1980, and these take place 1-2 to two BBY, aka 1-2 to two years before Star Wars A New Hope. They feature Han and Chewie's adventures in the corporate sector authority. Best way to describe these novels is Cowboy Bebop, but Star Wars? Han Solo is the original space cowboy and gets up to all sorts of trouble. These are some fun sci-fi adventures that have aged remarkably well. In book one, Han has to break Chewie out of space jail. In book two, Han has to fight some slavers. And Chewbacca has to kill a pterodactyl and then use its skin to make a hand glider. If you don't love that, you need therapy. And finally, The Lost Legacy has Han Solo cribbing from Indiana Jones and having to deal with talking Loch Ness monsters. These novels are great fun and remained in EU continuity. The young Han Solo novels were written by A.C. Crispin and published from 1997 to 1998 and start in 10 BBY and show Han going from a fresh-faced 18-year-old to the old space dog we saw in A New Hope. These novels are of a different tone than the Brian Daly ones. For one, they are way darker. Han started out begging on the streets as a five-year-old only to get enslaved and then when he tried to escape the slaver, his adopted mom got blasted in the gut and died in his arms. Han Han Solo is my favorite character not because he is a cocky space pirate, but instead because he is a broken man that put himself back together multiple times and remained a true hero no matter what. The Star Wars Expanded Universe was divided into multiple eras. Before the Republic, Old Republic, Rise of the Empire, Rebellion, New Republic, New Jedi Order, and finally, Legacy. In the late 90s, each Star Wars novel would have a page or two devoted to the timeline, and this timeline showed what novels were in publication so that the reader would always know what era they were reading. So going back to the New Republic era, we got the X-Wing series. It is a 10-book novel series, first penned by Mike Stackpole and later by Aaron Alston. The novels were published from 1996 to 1999, and they started in 6.5 ABY. The first five novels were written by Michael Stackpole and featured the fighter pilot group known as Rogue Squadron, helmed by Rebellion Vet, Wedge, Death Star Destroyer, and Tillies. But the main character was a new guy named Corn Horn, and in the first five novels, he has a major character arc and ends in my favorite and first Star Wars novel of all time, I, Jedi. Do not read this novel unless you have read the first four, otherwise you will have zero idea what's going on. This was the first novel I ever had as a kid, but I never finished it because I had no idea who Corrin Horn even was. That's kind of the problem moving forward. As we get deep into the New Republic era, you gotta have a lot of backstory to know what is happening. I, Jedi, can best be described as Jedi Batman, Nuff said. The rest of the X-Wing novels written by Aaron Alston focus on a new group of pilots named Wraith Squadron, as they do battle in a more rough and tumble way. These novels are a bit darker than Stackpole's and feature, shall we say, more adult situations. <sighs> I guess I better do it. The prequels, episode 1, 2, and 3, were terrible movies by any metric. But, surprisingly, their novels were kick-ass. Episode 1's novelization was written by Terry Sword of Shannara Brooks and was the first novel introduction of Darth Bane and was so much better than that bloody movie. I mean, it really is night and day. Attack of the Clones was written by R.A. Drizzt do Erden Salvatore and cleans up that mess. Finally, we got one of the best novels in the entire expanded universe, Revenge of the Sith by Matthew Stover. He takes the rather rough Revenge of the Sith and redeems it in a way that makes it look even worse than it already did. It makes Anakin's fall to the dark side make a lot more sense, and man, his transition to Darth Vader is chilling. After Attack of the Clones, there were numerous Clone Wars novels released, and they were 
all far better than that abominable felony baloney we would later get. The novels actually made sense and had logical consistency, as did the timeline of events, and there are no felony body pillows to be found. So first, we've got the MedStar duology, and these two novels are some of the best. They were written by Matthew Reeves and Steve Perry and published in 2004. These novels take place in 20 BBY, and they detail some Republic doctors and Jedi healers fighting to save the lives of clones as the Republic and CIA fight over a planet with a life-saving organism. These novels are pitch dark and really show the horrors of war and can best be described as the TV show MASH, but in space. Then we have the Republic Commando series by Karen Travis, aka the True Mandalorian series. It consists of five novels, Hard Contact, Triple Zero, True Colors, Order 66, and Imperial Commando. The first novel was published in 2004, just slightly before the game, and the last novel, Imperial Commando, was published in 2009. The novels span the time period between 22 BBY and 19 BBY and follow the characters of Omega Squad, at least for the first novel, and then the true The Mandalorian, aka Cal Scarada, for the rest of the series. The first novel is a straightforward fight on a planet and the rest are as messy as wars truly are. So we got some of the best characters and plots in all of Star Wars here, but memes have given this series a bad rap. In short, people like to say that Karen hates the Jedi and loves the Mandos. This is not true. As you read the novels, you see the Mandos as various shades of gray and black, and the Jedi as the same. Both factions are shown as being a reflection of the other, and no Jedi is ever made to look foolish or petty or cruel. Instead, the novels focus on the human cost of the Clone Wars and how wars are never pretty. Now, a good case in point as to why this series does not demonize Jedi, at the end of the series in the novel Order 66, a clone has a chance to kill a Jedi and does not and instead chooses to save the Jedi as he recognizes that killing him would be wrong. And Cal Skarata, at the end of this series even wants to save a group of Jedi. The Republic Commando series was sadly cancelled before it could give us a good conclusion, but fan works exist that finish out the series, and damn, is one fan continuation called Dying Day really, really good if a bit traumatic. So once the Clone Wars ended the first time, it was time for The Rise of the Empire. And one of the best novels in this era is Dark Lord, The Rise of Darth Vader, written by James Lucino and published in 2005 and set in 19 BBY. This novel features the newly minted Dark Lord of the Sith, Darth Vader adjusting to his new suit and the galaxy adjusting to the new state of affairs. This is one of the few novels that gets Vader right and really sets the stage for what the Empire is going to be. Death Star is a novel written by Michael Reeves and Steve Perry and published in 2007 and is set 3 BBY through 0 BBY. This explains the construction of the Death Star and fills in those gaps. Why was there an exhaust port? Well, it was due to a slave not mentioning that it was on the plans. Why didn't the Death Star immediately fire on Yavin 4? It was the gutter going nuts. This novel is truly one of the best in the entire expanded universe. You've got great characters and it will keep you in interested from start to finish. We then have The Deep Time. The Old Republic era extends thousands of years before Episode 4. The first of the Old Republic novels was the Darth Bane trilogy, written by Drew Kotor Karpishan and released from 2006 to 2009 and was set in 1006 BBY through 980 BBY. This is a novel series that covers the rise of Darth Bane. He started out as a humble miner. He gets into a scuffle with some Republic soldiers over some gaming winnings. A dude named Dessel joins the Sith, takes the name Bane, and starts the long road straight to the top of the charts. This was a unique novel trilogy in that the main characters were all villains, and pretty compelling villains at that. If you love the Joker movie, you will love these novels as they truly show how scary a truly intelligent villain can be. At the end of Star Wars, there was a new setting created that got all of one novel and a comic book series, and that was the Before the Republic era. It was supposed to fill in the gaps of how both the Republic and the Jedi came to be. The one novel was named Dawn of the Jedi Into the Void, and it was written by Tim Halfway Adequate Alien Novels Laban and published on April 1st of 2014 and was one of the last real Star Wars novels. 
It is set 25,000 years before the Battle of Yavin and shows the adventures of Lannery Brock, a proto-Jedi, as she tries to stop her brother from gaining a powerful artifact. This was another top-tier Star Wars novel that featured some horror elements and a lot of action and could have set the stage for a new kick-ass setting. Alas, Disney came in and ruined it all, but the fans remain. Enter Hand of Thrawn 45, a fanfic writer that I swear must be an old EU writer because his writing is as good as anything from the EU and nails the tone spectacularly. He took it upon himself to finish the EU and has written numerous fan conclusions to unfinished Star Wars settings. If you want some more EU, click the link in the description and enter the galaxy far, far away again. Now, before we go, we got True Tomes of Deep Lore, the Star Wars Essential Guides. At one point, there was so much lore for Star Wars that Lucas put out guides to all that was Star Wars. The these essential guides covered vehicles, weapons, droids, characters, and most importantly, chronology. They were like RPG supplements, but for, well, lore for its own sake. This is pretty much the only franchise to ever create anything like this, or anything on this scale at least, and the guides predated the concept of the wiki, and they were even better than the wiki as they each added lore and clarify things that were of dubious continuity. I would say read them all, but the one you want the most is the new essential guide to chronology as it will tell you all you ever wanted to know about the Star Wars universe. Oh dear, ladies and gentlemen, looking at these Star Wars books again has really given me a bittersweet feeling. These were my childhood, and these books showed just why Star Wars appealed to so many. You had great heroes doing great deeds in a grounded universe that, while dark in places, was still hopeful. What's really crazy is how well these books have held up over the years, and today I find myself loving these books even more, as I can appreciate them more as an adult versus a teen, and many of them hit quite differently now that I've actually lived life. And if you haven't read them since you were a teenager, get to rereading, cause man, they are good. I am General Lutz, wishing you good, Death Star and good Hand of Thrawn 45 or whatever makes you happy. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing and please consider leaving a like or a comment as the algorithm desires your soul. And I want to thank all those fans who have supported this channel, both past and present.